As Bill Shankly once said, some people think football is a matter of life and death. I assure you, it's much more serious than that. The World Cup is the most watched sporting event in the world, with 32 teams battling it out for the most coveted prize in football. For the first time in history, an African nation will host the tournament this year. Seen as controversial by some, and by others as an example of soccer's ability to be progressive and inspiring. How will England fare? Which teams are the front runners? And who are the rank outsiders? To discuss the beautiful game, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington, a man with a head like a fucking football. <laughs> An orange one. Alright. Alright, I'm finished. Cut! Alright. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm trying to calm my gums down. We well, don't do it with water. What do you do it with? You're trying to you calm your gums down? You do it with meditation and hard drugs. <laughs> What's the problem with your gums? When I'm stressed out, my teeth now. What? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Say that again. When I'm sort of stressed out, me, me gums and my teeth now before I do. It's like a weakness. So what's up? You've got a toothache then? Mm. I thought you went to the dentist. I did the other week. Well, what's wrong with your teeth then? It's just because you're stressed. I don't know. Why don't are you know. stressed? What have you got to be stressed about? I don't know. That's that's what that's what's weird with stress, isn't it? No. Your body can be stressed without you realising. That's what no, kills people. Stressed. No, 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 no. You're stressed because you feel stressed, and then your body gets weak because you're. No, because I'm pretty good. I don't. I never feel stressed. That's part of my problem. That's not I a am problem. stressed, but I don't know about it. That's well, why that it's makes sense at all. It's number one killer. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you you mean? never get stressed. If you don't feel stressed, how are you stressed? But you must be stressed if you're too right. fatigued. It's like saying, I didn't feel like I had a pain, but apparently I did. Listen. Go on. I was in Israel recently. Mm. I had a bag put over my head, chucked in the back of the van. Now the thing is, I kind of right. thought, well- It wasn't a blind date, by the way, <laughs> and he wasn't being, um, arrested or kidnapped. It was a- it was a training thing, wasn't it, for yes, kidnapped situations? Yes, but I didn't know. I didn't know. What, you didn't know they were gonna do it? Brilliant. No. They don't tell me anything, do they? That's good. So, so what th happened then? So the thing is, that happened, I had a panic on a little bit. Afterwards, they took the bag off, I realised everything was alright. I was calm, but my body was shaking. And that's what that I'm saying to you. That doesn't make any sense. My body, as far as my body was concerned, it had just been kidnapped. Right. But I knew I hadn't. Anyway, <laughs> football. The, you know the bag they put over your head? Was it like a tennis racket cover? What what shape was it? You sure they just didn't go and thought, oh, I thought I'd just bought the world's biggest orange. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Right. Soccer. Yeah. The World Cup we 2010. We thought we'd jump on the bandwagon with every other fucker who's doing a World Cup podcast. Yep. Um, uh, even though we've got nothing to say about it. Whoa! What? I got a few things. Yeah, but it's gonna be so disappointing. We're gonna get <laughs> excited, we're gonna sit down. In fact, by if you're listening to this now, England are probably out of the fucking World Cup. <laughs> oh. I disagree with you, I'm right behind the lads. Yeah? Right, okay. But, do you remember, cause I've watched the World Cup a few times with Ricky, in b different projects we've been doing in the past, we've been yeah. in different situations. Mm. Do you remember when, I think it, the last time we qualified, we were doing, um, a project, and uh, we were, uh, we watched it together in a hotel room. We were watching extras, right? And, uh, We are making extras. Making extras, extras yeah. And, um, we watched it, we said, oh, I'm going to my room, I went to C's room. But, of course, in the hotel room, it was just like a big bed. So, we sat on the bed together, and we thought that was a bit intense, so I put a line of pillows down. But I don't understand what, to my, it, he was put a line of pillows between us. Now, he knows I'm not gonna jump on him. No, I know. He's not gonna jump on me. No. But he's still terrified that some kind of, like, some kind of paparazzi is gonna sort of <laughs> parasend down <laughs> the building and peer in and take a photo of us, <laughs> and that's before we've got time to explain that we're just watching the football, <laughs> it's already printed going, well, this is clearly evidence of their game. Yeah. There's no way that they could possibly be sat on a bed just as friends. No, but hold on, though. Why were we naked? <laughs> Why didn't we just pop some trousers on? But I seem to remember that you, even though it was my room, you forced me to sit in the chair. It was one of those really uncomfortable box chairs. I said, it's weird, I can't get excited, we're having a beer, okay? So now we're drinking. Now we're drinking in bed. On the <laughs> bed. In no, bed. no, no, no. We had our clothes on, we're on the bed, watching football. But I couldn't go, come on England, with a little man sitting next to me in the bed. Not little man at all. No, big man. And so I just thought, let's pop the pillows down, that wasn't enough. I said, Steve, I can't do this. I can't, I can't watch football with a man on a bed. I said, so, 
go in the chair and he sat in, the sat in his chair which is for a man of my size those tiny little crappy hotel box chairs are no good it's 90 bloody minutes plus the interview it was my room i was furious i felt like i was um uh, uh like an old rich man just waiting to die and my little manservant used to come and sit and watch football with me <laughs> exactly, in the yeah. last days <laughs> the last of days. my time <laughs> i'm in bed going oh it's gone again he goes all right i'm up up later look rooney's taking a penalty <laughs> no it's gone it's all out i go oh dear so oh yeah let me clean it up we can put this on pause it's sky <laughs> plus is let's uh, open a window yeah yeah um but but the thing is that the, the most i like often i think football fans are very homoerotic they're hugging each other jumping on each other mm. swapping shirts and stuff so there's nothing wrong with it being intimate watching a football game. Yeah, but I don't think, I don't think gay people do that. Gay people don't run around hugging each other and swapping shirts, do they? They get stuck in. Carl, would you sit on a bed, right, with Stephen in a hotel room, right, watching football, okay, you're pouring, you're pouring each other wine and beer and shabby- Well, no, there wasn't that music playing, there was the roar of the crowd and John Motson doing commentary, it wasn't <laughs> a, It's not a sexy sound at all. <laughs> what do you think, Carl? Um... Someone said, oh, come to my room, we're watching football. You got there and he went, D -d 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 -d. Well, who was on the bed first? That's not what happened! Who was on the bed first? Well, he probably got up to answer the door. So he, so, we, uh, I don't know. I came in, I thought, well, there's only a bed here. We sat down, we thought, yeah. No, but it wasn't, it was a chair there. So. Well, yeah, but you know full well that if you're in a room with Ricky, he's the one who's gonna leap straight on the bed and demand that you- I just take the chair. Well, why would you be concerned with lying on a bed yeah. next to me? what's up with that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Why, Why is it weird? I don't understand this. Because- I've changed my tune. <laughs> it's a bit weird lying on a bed with a mate just watching football. Yeah, you don't do that when you go around a house, do you? Yeah, you but it's because on. you have a sofa and things. We didn't have that in the yeah, room. Yeah, but when you visit someone in hospital, you don't say, move over. You pop- you don't pop yourself down yeah. next to him, you sit on the chair next to him. No, because to you're not there in a relaxed situation for 90 minutes enjoying a game of sport. It's a- it's just a more formal environment. Mm. Cause you're quite a sport fan, aren't you, Carl? Yeah, but not in, um <clears throat> I don't like getting into things too much because mm. it can well, only be disappointing. True. I've never seen him get into anything. No. To be quite honest, no, I am a football fan, but I've got in, I've got, I've got it now to a point where if they lose, it only bothers me for about half an hour. Yeah, and then I move on because mm. the thing is, I'm not in control of it. There's nothing I can do to alter that no. that team. If I could go in and say, "Listen, you're lazy. You get your finger out. You move up front a bit," it's different, but it's totally. It's like getting annoyed with nature. There's nothing you can do. Mm. So let it happen, watch it if you want, but don't get annoyed about it, because it's totally out of your hands. Interesting yeah. that Carl's team tactics also sounds like he could be directing a gay porn. <laughs> 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 you get your finger out, you get up front. <laughs> You're lazy. <laughs> That's uh, amazing. What do you think of these people, though? I love it that everyone's a, an expert. Everyone's a pundit. You see these fat people in pubs going, well, he's lost a few yards up front. Yeah, you, you'd be crazy. Mm. You fucking score a goal then, fatty. Mm. Wearing a football top. Yeah. I hate that. Exactly, yeah. They shouldn't make them for them. Shouldn't make them in that size. <laughs> it should be one size only. If you're fit enough to play football, you can wear one. If you're yeah. a fatty, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> it looks ridiculous anyway. But what's uh, that? That's what he was talking about. So you were a big fat slob with his belly out in an England shirt going, I could score from there. Go on then, let's have a go. Mm. Hey, listen, calm down. Don't be slagging off the fans because that's what it's all about. All, football's all about the supporters, isn't it? You know, mm. let's not forget these people paid millions to entertain us. If we want to drink till we're fat and eat pork pies, and then put on an England shirt, we'll do it. But that is the it British way, that is the English way, that is what we won a war for. What difference does it make if we win or lose? That's what I always look at, the end result. How can you say you like football and then give us that argument? The well, only reason to watch football is, is the excitement of the challenge. Yeah, it's entertainment. No, it is and entertainment. A bit of skill. It's nice to see a bit of skill. Well, that, that yeah, because it's entertaining. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, enjoy the game for what it is, and then forget about it. If Fat Bob in the pub, mm. he's got his football top on. Mm, just. He gets all annoyed mm. when England, you know, lose. Yeah. What difference does it make? What difference does it make if they lose there or lose in the final? Well, I'll What's the point? Well, I'll tell you what difference it makes. I knew a fat Bob, okay? That wasn't his name, but I'm changing the name to protect the innocent and him. And he's not innocent, right? Was it Fat Dave? It was a big fat bloke, right? And he worked on one of the crews, um, that used to bring in equipment where I used to work at the Students' Union, okay? And, uh, he was- he was massive, right? And, uh, I think it was- 
90 or, I mean, 1992, the Euro, right, when England got knocked out, and he went mental. And he was so angry, he went out and he wanted retribution, okay. Luckily, there were no German people around, but the closest he, he could find was a sausage van. Some poor <laughs> bloke who delivered sausages, and he turned it over. He got the van and he turned it over, because it was selling sausages, so he thought, that's German enough. No, well, if he's fat, he's probably just annoyed that it wasn't open. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, very excited because Peter Crouch is in the tournament. Now, Peter Crouch- You identify with him, I, don't you? It, I love Crouchy. He's exactly the same height as me. Yeah. Six foot seven. He's sort of lanky and awkward looking. Right, but brilliant. I mean, still a very- you know, let's not forget that he is playing in the national squad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is a striker. You know, he's got an excellent track record of scoring for England. Admittedly, maybe not in the super top important games, but nevertheless- Tremendous. He's like your role model. He's like your pinup. He's isn't a role model. He? he had the. He wrote an autobiography, which I, I was going to call my autobiography, Tall Stories. Crouchy got there first, but good luck to him. I give it to him. Yeah. I, I, I'm happy for him to do that. Uh, I once got someone that came up to me in a in a in a club once and said, "Are you Peter Crouch?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> I thought she thinks I'm crouchy. What's the problem? <laughs> I, let's see how far we can get with this before the truth will out. But I she was went, disappointed. I didn't know you wore glasses. <laughs> no, I, exactly. I'm sort of off duty. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't wear them on the field, but- Do you think he'd have had a different career if he'd have worn glasses from the age of five, like you? This is one of the reasons I've not been a great footballer. Have you ever seen me doing any form of athletics or sport? No. Because I like to think I look quite elegant. You know, I feel like I'm actually in control of it, but when I look back, if like, someone's videoed it, I look like one of those giant costumes in It's a Knockout. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, where they, the arms With are the, flapping and, and they, the just, head. they just yeah. fall, fall over. No and real expression on their yeah. head. Yeah. But one of the things I was disappointed at, I was looking at, um, because obviously around this time of the year there's lots of advertising because of the footballers are all getting endorsements. And I was looking to see what each one was doing. And Wayne Rooney, he's got endorsement deals with Nike, with Nokia, with Coca-Cola. Lampard, Pepsi and Adidas. Peter Grouch, you know what he's advertising? Go on. Pringles. <laughs> it's not- it's not the coolest one, is it, Pringles? <laughs> I mean, even the name Pringles. <laughs> really? I know. It's sort of like an insult, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Who's that Pringle? <laughs> is that- uh, hold on. Is that Crouchy? No, it's Steve Merchant. <laughs> I mean, I love Pringles. Yeah. And I'm pleased to see Crouchy's associated, but I don't was bother, disappointed. Don't bother mentioning Pringles, thinking you'll get some free Pringles, because he went on about munches, and then we got another fucking sniff. Well, oh, true. True. What do you think of that, Carl? But you- are you a fan of Crouchy? You must be, uh... Uh... They're all much of a muchness. That's honestly, true, That's I didn't want to come in here and start talking about football. I watch it. Um, what do I mean, you mean, I didn't want to come in here. I was like, what, what, what a thing to say. What? Imagine, imagine Gary Lineker going, "Hello, work at BBC. I didn't want to be here today. Talk about football. Fed up. I've got better things to do." No, no, no. But it's something you talk about. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous coming in here talking about it before we've even kicked a ball. Who knows what's going to happen? If there's one thing that's good about it, it's that, innit? Not knowing. Well, that's what I don't understand. I don't understand all this punditry, why we have a three hour build up, then they talk about it half time, then they talk about it for half hour afterwards. I mean, for me, it's like, it's kick off, who won? They did, 3 1. All right, cheers, let's get on with work. But also, we like the whinging after. We are a, you know, this country loves a moan. They love it. Yeah. I love it. Love a good moan. I don't know how we'd be if we won. We'd go, all right, uh, what were they talking about? Yeah. See, back in 1966, people weren't as miserable. No. Okay, let's- well, hang on, I'd like to hear this theory extrapolated. Well, they weren't, were they? People were, um, uh, you know, the war had happened, like, not that long ago. Right. People getting on with it, 66, everyone's smart, you know, you dressed up if you went out, you know, they weren't on as much money, uh The footballers. Footballers. <clears throat> it was- it was just a game of football. Whereas now, it's like all this build-up going on. Just get on with it. You know, I'm sick of it, honestly, I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. I'm with it. you, I'm with you. I do think it's ridiculous that there's a, the, there's a match and the programme before, it's like two hours before it and then an hour after Well, that's just a shameless attempt to keep people, I mean, let's be honest, you and I have been guilty of being involved with that, haven't we? We've done various little skits and sketches in the past. But that's fun. I mean, that, we do that for us, not for them. Yeah. I don't, I don't care whether people like it or not. I, I did it because it was fun. I dressed up, um, you and a dwarf. The day doesn't get better than that. <laughs> Well, I was in a pub watching that year, and I'd forgotten that we'd done that, or at least that it was going to be shown that day. So I'm in this pub, it's crammed, obviously, and that comes on, the tennis on the big screen, and suddenly that's that sketch, right? A couple of things about me. One, no one was paying attention. <laughs> I was furious. I was thinking there's a couple of good looking birds here. 
Look, at least I'm the fucking dummy. Look at the dummy. Me and the sketch was uh, Ricky Gervais and Warwick Davis and Dwarf. Yeah. I'm playing crunchy. No one, not paying attention. The few that were, not amused at all, could not get- my mother, of course, remember, famously said, that's the funniest thing you've ever done, <laughs> which he'd knocked off in about twenty minutes. No one in the pub seemed interested. And then a few people, like, looked round, looked at me, looked at the screen, sort of shrugged, carried on going. Nothing. Nothing. But also, kind of, it is embarrassing, that situation. I was on a flight, um, internal flight in America. And, uh, you know, on the, uh, the internal flights, um, you don't get individual screens. They give you individual players, but there's also screens all down the aisle. Sure. For people, right, where Ghost Town was on. Ooh. Looked over, someone watching the extras. <laughs> and, and I had to make sure that at no point did I glance up at the screen, like he's watching himself, <laughs> yeah. and make sure I flicked over whenever it came up the office or extras. Yeah. If I'm on the tube and I'm flipping through the paper, sometimes there'll be an interview with you that I'm not aware is going to be in the paper. Yeah. And I have to flip on by because I don't want to plug on the tube going, oh, reading about your mate, are you? <laughs> yeah. I don't, don't get enough of him, do you? Need to be reading, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I just... know. <laughs> Carl. Have you been, uh, recognised, uh, do you ever get recognised much? Yeah, now and again. But I haven't done anything of any worth, however, it's almost like recognising a neighbour or something, because they sort of go, oh, it's him. And then the other one might go, what's he do? Go, oh, I don't know. It's not like I've done something- Right, of any worth. Of any worth, yet. Yeah. yeah. None of us has done anything of any worth. It's all relative to the entertainment industry. You know, wh whatever you think of The Office, you know, I'm very proud of it, but I haven't secured a bunker in enemy territory. Mm. I haven't given a kidney away. Do you know what I mean? It's all relative. It's just, did you entertain anyone? Did you, you know, bring a smile to someone's face? Was it a laugh? I, I think you're forgetting all those emails I pass on to you for those people that have had traumas in their lives. You know, the earthquake victim. There's people that have lost relatives or had, you know, terrible life-threatening diseases and they say the podcast got them through. Doesn't that warm the cockles of your heart? Uh, well, normally it's, it's gone straight to you, hasn't it? And you just forward it me on, so it's- it's almost like spam to me. <laughs> it doesn't- it doesn't feel as special, cos it's like, here you go. Look at this. You know. Unbelievable. I've got the new iPad. I've had it for a few months, actually. It got sent to me by, um, by the inventor. That's who you're dealing with there, Steve. Bloody hell. You've got it, aren't still you? still getting free shit. My favourite app on this is it that, that you just type in what you want it to say and it says it. Carl has got a head like a fucking orange. The cunt. Yeah, that's good, that. It's almost certainly what it was designed for. <laughs> I haven't seen that on the advert. <laughs> Carl has got a head like a fucking orange. The yeah. cunt. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. She sounds like a Radio 4 oh. news announcer. So what is that for? For doing that. Carl has got a head like a fucking orange. Right. The cunt. Yeah. Did I mention his round head? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Good. Right then, so, uh... I think I first became really excited by the World Cup, that famous year when Maradona did the handball. Do you remember what was that, 1986? 86. Yeah. Oh, that was so exciting. Because obviously he'd been so brilliant in that tournament, and then he did cheat, as we all know. Yeah. What do you, what do you make of that? Do you remember that moment, Carl? Well, that, was, that was very formative I, for I me. I know what I made of it. The cunt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, isn't cheating part of, part of all games now? Hang on, here oh, we go, this on. is controversial. Well, uh, 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 There's a lot of young people who look up to Carl as a role model. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the world we live in now, isn't it? It's, uh, get what you can, how you can. But what's your feeling? Are you the sort of person, I mean, have you ever cheated in a game? Are you that sort of person? Um, I just think, my dad does it a lot. Um. What, in board games and that? Yeah, just, just cards, you know, Monopoly. Um, How does he cheat in Monopoly? Just nicks a lot of the money. Oh, just straightforward nicks the money. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, I love that. But how do you not notice he's doing it? Because I'm understand. busy looking at, you know, what properties I've, I've invested in and sure. stuff. And the money's just there, isn't it? See, I don't see the point of cheating. No, I don't. Monopoly. I say that to him. I say, you're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. But to him, it, he's, he's broke the system, hasn't he? He's got round the rules. What do you mean I can only have that much? You says I can. Bosh. Get some more money. Buy some more hotels. And in a way, that's life, isn't it? Mm. All people with loads of money now, you kind of go, have they made that honestly? Right. 
you know, I pass big houses in London and I think gangsters, gotta be gangsters to have a house like that. Yeah. There's no way a normal job, someone who's, cause I know, I'm trying to make money and I know how hard it is to make money. Cause the more money you make, the more hands are out there taking little bits. So how the hell has this man bought this house? <laughs> gotta be a crook. <laughs> And so do you yourself cheat? Would you consider yourself a cheater? Are you honourable? In games. Well, just generally, do you cheat on anything? No, do you know what? The other week, I'd had a cup of tea and some fish and chips mm. at this pub, and they only took for one. And I went back the next day and said, oh, you didn't charge me for my fish and chips. What a fucking moron. I paid. No, I didn't tell her about the tea, though. <laughs> Got a free tea? The free tea, yeah. I just thought, well, you know, it's pretty good that I've gone back to pay for that. How much is a tea bag? Mm. The water's free. Yeah. I'll have that for free. So that, again, that's just me, it's like the Mars bar and the paper round. Mm. It's me going, well, I've been good, the fish would have cost money, potatoes are pretty cheap, but I'll pay for it. But for my goodness, is a little gift. Have a free cup of tea. But who's given you the right to make that decision? That's me, that. That's me. I'm deciding there. Right. I'm in charge. I didn't have to go in there. I didn't have to go back and pay. I went back and paid. Tell you what, Carl, treat yourself. How's that? Have the cup of tea. All right, I will do. There's the fish and chips. Absolute if she, bollocks. If she was good at her job, <laughs> she'd have remembered. I thought she would have done. In a way, it annoyed me that she didn't go, oh yeah, so you did, well done, thank you very much for coming back. Right. She just was like, did you? Not she looked at me. I she, looked like, she looked at me like we didn't even know. Yeah. I was worrying about a staff member getting, sort fired of or getting done yeah. or having to pay for it. You I know, know what you're coming at there. One of my first disappointments with football, I was, um, I was ten years old, okay, and, uh, one of the teachers was, um, in charge of the football team, my junior school, and, uh, I went down to Tutty's, it was, a shop in Reading, my mum, so it's, it's white socks, black shorts, white shirt, like that, got that, right. Went to, knocked on his door, I said, uh, I've got my kit. He went with the trials were yesterday. You've missed it. <laughs> that was it for a year. Right? Next year, I went with the trials, went the trials, got the trials, okay? He was going, everyone, I want to give it 100%, right? Really try hard, really try hard. He's watching people play, right? I made sure that every time I ran by him, I was out of breath. I, <sighs> like, really try, <sighs> every time I ran by him, he sort of looked at me, I think, yeah, right? <sighs> Came to it, he said, the team is this, I'm left out. Right? He went past me and he went, you've clearly got asthma. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't make that team either? Yeah, and I didn't, and, and, uh, and I vowed that day, never try hard at anything. Yeah, well you've certainly kept that up. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, Carl? Were you play, do you play sport at school? Um, a little bit, but it was never taken seriously at school anyway. It was, uh, I think the PE teacher was a geography teacher as well. So it's like, you know. What yeah. does he know? It was all that. Basically, he put some tracksuit pants on that were always too tight for him. and see everything. What were you looking at? Did you couldn't help it. It was in the days when clothing was tight as it is. Mm. And then it was like lycra tracky bottoms. Oh, right. And everyone used to say, look at the state of that. But, like uh, stealing sausages from It was ridiculous. Londis. Ridiculous. Um, so he didn't know what he was doing anyway. Th if anything, it was dangerous. Because he didn't know what was, what was the capability of a, of a ten-year-old kid's body. Right. He, he put you through loads of stuff. Right. He didn't like me anyway, because he wasn't that good. If you're not that good, teachers don't like I you. I thought you'd be pretty good. I wasn't interested. That's the thing. I did right. relay, and I got done for swearing. Got whacked on the arse with a baton. Hold on, what, what, why were you swearing in relay? When, when did that come into it? When did you need to swear in relay? You're running round, how do they Because the lads wouldn't slow down, so I couldn't pass it on, so I sort of said, fucking slow down, and uh, he heard me, and then went mental at me. But yeah, so it was never, I mean, Darren Campbell, the, the, the athlete, I've told you, I don't know that I was involved in his, his training. No. Didn't know about this. Yeah, Darren Campbell, the, uh, I think he won a gold medal. Didn't he used to push you around in a bath or something? Uh, it's not last of the summer wine. <laughs> <laughs> It was, um, it was in my go-kart. Right. And you used to, it was a motorised go-kart and you had to like pick it up at the back, run with it at speed and then drop the wheels down and the engine kicked in. But hold on though, that means you always needed two people to get you going on a go-kart? No one. He did it. Well, wh where were you? Sat in it. Well then you did need two then to get it going. What are you on about? 
He, if it, I was sat in it. Yeah. He picks it up, mm. runs with it. Yeah. Drops it down. <laughs> wheels start, engine starts, off I go. But what would you have done without him? Well, I couldn't have done it. So you do need two people then for this motor well, to go? Well, one person. I'm sat in it. Yeah, but the, counting you, it's two people needed. Yeah. Fuck me. Jesus well, what's Christ. So, what's so bad about that? Well, how can you, how can you have a play with yourself then? <laughs> and you go, can't. <laughs> Um, sorry, this was part of his official Olympic training. No, no, but I just feel like that was part of his early training. Right. Which is the important bit in any, you know, job or- Well, walk, no, we should life. explain, people don't know, he was the bloke who used to push the bobsleigh in the Winter Olympics, wasn't he, for the England team? No, he was a- he was a runner. Well, how was that part of his training then? Pushing a fucking go-kart? <laughs> what was he doing? Because it's running. But he's running about a yard. No, no, sometimes more than that. Quite a lot. And it's just, uh, God, what do you want? It's Darren Campbell <laughs> pushing me go-kart. You, you seem to be taking half the credit for his gold medal. <laughs> All you've done is sat on your arse, you lazy twat. I just kind of think, he was, he was at the age where it's important, he could have made a decision not to go into it at that point, and I think he was never keen to get in the go-kart. Yeah. He was always keen to push it. And I used to let him. Now, if I said, <laughs> no, I don't want you pushing me go-kart, who knows? I'm just saying I was there at the start. Doing nothing. Providing nothing. Sitting on your ass. <laughs> Sitting around. Well, letting you, someone you, else all right, do it. What athletes have you helped? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know this was a, uh, let, let's, let's do a podcast about athletes we've helped. <laughs> You've not helped them, Carl. I'd have come prepared. <laughs> I bet if he ever did a book, an autobiography, he'd go, they, you know, the early years, Darren Campbell. No, I want to know if he has done an autobiography because we're going to be looking this up. I remember the training. I'm making a note of that for the next time you do anything. Round at Pilkinson's. Darren Campbell. Pushing a go-kart. Pushing. Bold. You weren't bald then, were you? Well. Orangey. Orangey twat. Orangey twat. In. Crap. Cheap. It wasn't. Go kart. 120 quid it was. You know how many paper rounds that is? What I like when, um, you're watching football on the television is if it goes to a close up of a footballer, it's just kick the ball out, Mr. Gar is gone for a free kick or whatever. If you stay on any footballer for more than 10 seconds, they will either swear or gob. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a fact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never needed to gob that much. It's I don't care how knackered I am, I'm never gobbing like that. It's weird though. The other week, I just sat in the garden, slavering. <laughs> just to see if it would ever run out. And it's amazing. I don't know where it all comes from. What is the that's strangest- That's extraordinary. That's amazing. Just so to that, see if it would run so out. So now he's got to the point in his life where, a as a hobby, or a pastime, or just to count down the minutes before he dies- Yeah. He sat in the garden- Creating sputum. Slavering to see if he'd ever run out. I mean, that's amazing, Where, where does Carl. it all come from? Well, you create what? it, don't you? But from what? I'm always getting done for not drinking enough water. Salivary glands. But it's amazing. Honestly, I just sat like that with my head forward and just let it drip. Fuck wow. me! So Suzanne that comes into the garden and all she sees is her patient. boyfriend sat like something from one of the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, like dribbling, battered around the head with a cricket bat. No, she was she was did reading she, something. Did you answer she was back to there. a dictator? Yeah. What did he do? Battered me. But you I got a trench up your ass as well. Yeah, that makes me slather. No, just sat there. What a fucking That's mom. extraordinary. What, what a div you are. And I just had my head there and it continuously- I think I got bored of it before it stopped. <laughs> oh God! I have never heard anything like this! Oh God, I need a second opinion! Wanker. It's unbelievable! He just sat there with his head down, slavering, letting it just- That's extraordinary. You weren't even sort of like, <sighs> gobbing, you were just, no, just letting- letting it, letting it sort of drop. So you, you got you've got <laughs> nothing else going on in your life, but you've got time to do this. So your brain wasn't even engaged. How long you were you there for? I tell you what, no joking, probably a good fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> fifteen wow. minutes, 
of sitting with his head forward, Amazing. letting him salivate onto the grass. But do you reckon you could do that amount? I would well, never, we'd do never, it. Try. never do it. Never try. I would never try. I would never have that amount of time. I've never, I've ne- I, I tell you now, you will never see either of us sat there for no reason in the garden with our head forward and our mouth open seeing how long we can create saliva. Unless I've just come out of a coma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or a gas attack. Yeah. No, I have a lot of, uh, I'm sort of goes unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great new dance duo. And it, please welcome to the stage. It's Goz Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. D- uh, didn't you have a little bit of problem in, um, China with them all gozzing? Gozz Unlimited. Oh, God, I tell you. They're just spitting all the time over there. I don't know what it's all about. All the time. That noise of... <laughs> oh. That, continuously. That... Everywhere you look. That good sort of footballer ball of gob that they sort of, they spit and it kind of flies a couple of... I can't do it. I've tried. I can never do it. Yeah. If I try and spit, it just dribbles down my shirt. I don't That's know why amazing. I can't do it. That's amazing. I've tried in the past. Well, it used to be cool. I remember when I was yeah. a kid, you'd hang no. around outside yeah, the spa. Yeah, yeah. What you've got to do is you've got to sit in a chair in the garden, just put your head <laughs> forward practice, and yeah. open your mouth and Pract- just let the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the all comes out. And, uh, you'll probably get bored after about 15 minutes <laughs> okay. if you're a fucking moron. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I like, um, I like when you're watching the football on TV and it just goes quiet for a moment, there's like a lull in the action, and you just hear that, that sort of plaintive horn. Yeah. Come on, England. <laughs> yeah. Come on, England. I just find it so kind of mournful. <laughs> it's sort of, and it's just the fact that someone's taken the effort to take it, I don't know what instrument that is, is it a trumpet or is it just, it never sounds as elegant as a trumpet. I don't know, maybe Just some kind of horn. It's sort of, it's, it's, um, reminiscent of like battle though, isn't it? Yeah. Like there was the, you know, you had all the cannons and everyone, then there was one bloke that just had to walk, one bloke that carried the flag. But, but it's never but triumphant, it's, it's sort of, you imagine you would, you would have it at the funeral of a great footballer. Yeah. <laughs> Echoing yeah, around the stadium. Yeah. It's just, it always makes me slightly depressed. Although, it is safer to be him in a football match than when you're walking into battle. Because if you're the fellow with a flag, you're going, well, you're a walking target. Yeah. Everyone can see target that. Target practice. And yeah. then they go, so, and even if it's dark, they go, I can't hear it, but I'll just, I'll just shoot at the sound of that trumpet. Yeah. And no one likes the fucking trumpet. No one's here. Hang trumpet on, what's, what's the trumpet? What? What do you mean a trumpet into war? Well, there used to be people that, that, that would, you know, carry an instrument that would uh, dun, 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 or, you know- What, the, in a battle? Yeah. Keep them marching up, keep them around the soldiers, bloke with the flag, bloke with the drum, bloke with the trumpet. I mean, <laughs> think of this- The this, 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 Yeah, the Scots guard, yeah. Um, diversity. They'd be- <laughs> yeah. They'd be a- Subo at the back. Yeah. Subo at the back, I'll just keep- out the front. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, not having this, I don't believe that oh, is- uh, Of course they did. Back in the day. Are you sure? That, that happened. What about the bagpipes? What about them? <laughs> we better start going because I'm running out of breath. It's a good job this podcast is free because <laughs> if you just paid for that. <laughs> it's not a good sound anyway. If anything, it might annoy you and then you're more angry and then you go mental with a gun. Well, I don't, yeah. I think that's, that's what it's more about, isn't it? Because there's certain instruments that aren't appropriate for a war, like maracas. Maracas, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just, it's just a bit too carnival. Grand isn't piano. It? <laughs> oh, one of those <laughs> that sort be of. At all. No. That thing, that sort of. <laughs> the little. Yeah. <laughs> Penny whistle or whatever they When call someone it. gets shot at the arse. <laughs> that <laughs> is when the major goes, oh, okay, well, oh, bloody hell! She's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Symbols uh, are a good sound for a war. Good. You want symbols. Crashing symbols. Timpanies. Very good, exciting. Symbols, timpanies. So at what but point? But one of those, um, keyboard guitars. <laughs> yeah, that's that not as cool. Funky, when the, but yeah. not as cool. Oh, the batteries are falling out. <laughs> you don't need a wah-wah pedal in a war. <laughs> no, no. So why have, why has that stopped then? No, they still have, they still have military bands, don't they? Yeah, but that's more, that's what I'm saying, that's more, more like pop a, and a Sunday yeah. sort of bandstand, mm. let's play, we will rock you. Yeah. And, yeah, you but know. the thing about modern technology is, you know, helicopters and tanks is gonna get drowned out, isn't it? Years ago. Yeah. Nowadays, they send in a sort of really good sort of mega mix DJ. <laughs> yeah. Joe's <laughs> funny. Yeah, exactly. Westwood's up there, going, giving it. <whistles> he's doing like, he's scratching and- Come on, the place is mad deep with Taliban! <laughs> 
What do you think about George Best using up his liver, then getting another one and getting pissed again? Clever. Well, that's always going to encourage it, isn't it? I've always said that. What? The moment we can replace stuff, people just go, oh, sod it. Like what smokers. would you do if you gave someone a kidney and they then- with it. And they started just- You down the pub again. Doing drugs and shit and- Well, I wouldn't- I wouldn't hand it out to someone just- just like that, would I? I think you should be allowed to say, right, who's it for? Can I meet them? Right. And then have a chat with them. Right. Saying, have you learnt your lesson? Well, I'm gonna do it. Okay, okay. I'm a- I'm a- I'm a little, um, kid who wants a- a kidney, okay? Um, and you've come to- I'm- I'm at the top of the list. Hello. 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 How are you doing? Good. Are you gonna give me one of your kidneys so I can live? I don't know, um... Well, I'm at the top of the list, so... Why is your head so round? Right, so definitely not. <laughs> why? Definitely not. He's a little not. kid, look He's at him. He's a little kid. Pale. No, I need- I need He's a kidney. He's cheeky though, isn't he? No, cheeky. please. Lovely please, little kid. round Walk head. Can I have a, your kidney? No, you can't Oh, have come it. on, right, you've got let's two. Let's see another kid. Let's see another kid. No! Less I'm the top- I'm Less top of the fucking list. Give me one of your kidneys, you round-headed twat. No. And I wouldn't feel bad about not giving it you. Well, hold on though. Can we have a second opinion from the nurse? Wanker. Thank right. you, nurse. I would not feel bad about walking away from that kid and saying you can not have a kidney. So you're gonna- you're gonna- Do you know what? I'm gonna take this kidney out and bin it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. Do you know who that kid went on to become? Go on. Winston Churchill. Right. Well, maybe I helped. It's like Darren Campbell all over again. I made him stronger. I was tough with him. He saw how tough the world is. No, but he didn't. It, this is an alternative universe where he died because you never gave him that kidney. Yeah. Yeah, well you can't worry about that then, can you? If you're gonna- if you're gonna start going that far back and forward and stuff. But I think it- I don't know what I'd expect someone to be like. Just want them to go, what do you eat? I'd, I'd say write down your diet. Oh yeah, I- I'd, I'm gonna really- I'm gonna treasure this kidney. I'm gonna treasure it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm gonna really work hard and I'm gonna make something like more than you did. So I'll, um, So my- this- your kidney's gonna be a lot better off for me than you, you lazy tosser, I'll tell you that. If you want- if you want okay. achievement, then, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna do really well, unlike you, you thick little round-headed shit. So the quicker you get the fucking kidney out of your useless body yeah. and into mine, we'll all be happy, won't we? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go away and think about it for a month. Well, no. <sighs> <laughs> there you go. Don't have to get nasty. Sick of it. I'm always helping people out. Uh That's a big ask, isn't it? If I came to you, Rick, in all seriousness, yeah. and- and you could give me a kidney- would you give me a kidney? What if I end up needing it? Well, yeah, but that's the point, isn't it? That you're doing something- Can I have moment. it back? Can I have it back if I need no. it? What? No, because I need it. I've only- I've- a minor failure. I need at least yes. one. I need at least one. Yeah, you need one. Okay. Yeah. Right, okay. This is on loan. Cause if my other one goes, I want that back. Cause then I'll be on one. Well, no, you- yeah, but then we're both on one. No, no. Right, you've got- y yours- yours are fucked, so yeah. you might as well be on none. I've got two. Okay? I will give you one. Yeah. Right? With the express understanding that if my remaining one packs up, I want that one back. It's on loan. If we both live out our life, then so be it. But if this other one goes and they say, well, you need another kidney, I go, right, I know where I've kept one for the last ten years. So you're gonna deep. come to me, right, mm. you've gone knock knock, I've opened the door, my beautiful supermodel wife is mm. there. She's make... going, oh, his kidneys are brilliant now. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving it, it's great, he never stops having the sex. Yeah. She's making us iced teas. Right. You know, she says, come in, Rick. Yeah. Sit down. Mm. So good. She says, I love you. Thank you so much. That's right. Don't this worry lovely about it. man. I know you've not got long to live because you're old yeah. and fat. Yeah. You've had a good innings. Well, you've had a good ten years, though, haven't you, with this kidney? And that was a, you know, but, but uh, I what, love this man. You can return the favour. And he's favor. so young and we've Give got. Give me back my fucking kidney. We've got two beautiful children. Right, I tell you what. Give me my kidney back and have one of theirs. Two beautiful kids. Yeah. Small little there you kidneys. Go. Small little kidneys and there's no good more yet. to choose from. They're growing you. They're growing small you. It's kidneys. like when you put a little plant in a big pot. They grow. You're they're they catch up. They're, the kidneys are growing too. Two, so two I'll have my small. kidneys back and you've got four to choose from there. Well take one of each and you'll have two little kidneys to make one big kidney. Johnson, can you have this man removed from my house? <laughs> <laughs> Would you give anyone a kidney, Carl? Suzanne. I'm sure you would give Suzanne tricky, a kidney. Tricky, well, you yeah. obviously you'd give Suzanne a kidney, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, well, would you or are you just saying that? 
disposal ward. I don't really like the idea of it. So if what you're saying, what are you saying to Suzanne right now if she's listening to this podcast? Carl, good luck. Um, bit of good luck. I, you know I need a kidney, and oh. it's got quite rare. Mm. Well, we've got the same sort of blood group and everything, so, uh, yeah, you've got two, I've got none. Bibbidi bob one each. Let's have a good life. Yeah? I don't know. Uh, yeah, you'll have to, uh, have to have it. Which one are you thinking of going for? Cos the, uh... I think the right one's a bit dodgy because they had the kidney stones. Well, you keep that. Do you want I'll that have, one? I'll have the left one. No, I'll, I'll tell you what, you have that one because when I was in all the pain, you were going, it can't be that bad. So you have it. Mm. It's in good working order. They've looked at it. Yeah. But it is prone to stones. <laughs> <laughs> but he's using this to get back at her. <laughs> to say it can't be that bad. It's like poetic justice. He can give her the kidney she didn't believe was that painful. So, let her have that, and, um, I don't know what's life like with one kidney. Do You've you got to be more much? careful, you've got diet, you know, for specific diets. Yeah. And it is more dangerous. It's more of a strain on it, but, you know. Don't like talking about it, it's all, uh, it freaks me out. It freaks me out. It's all doing stuff now, the kidney's doing stuff. Yeah. My teeth are hurting still, still got a little bit of toothache going on there. Mm. I've got a sweat on. All stuff's going on without me knowing. Germs within round. I've had jabs for rabies. I've had hepatitis A and B. I don't even know what that does. <laughs> I've had A and I've had B. That's whizzing round my body. Body's in shock, innit, at the moment. It doesn't know what's going on. <sighs> I've had, uh... How is it notifying you of the shock? Well, I think, I, I, like I say, I keep getting this sweat. And, uh, what else have I had? Typhoid. <sighs> doesn't that, they shouldn't, all this stuff shouldn't be in my body, should it? And we don't really know, do we? They're saying, yeah, have this, have that, shove it in your arm, it's all right. But we don't really know. Long-term effect. I've got rabies in me. I never thought I'd have to have that. Tetanus. I've had. TB. Well, enjoy the World Cup, everyone. Come on, England. Come on, boys. Had um, the garden all. One for if I get bit by a dirty monkey. <laughs> Well, that's about it for the Ricky Gervais Guide to the World Cup. Um, it was very, uh, informative and interesting chat there. Um, if you've enjoyed this one, um, you can, um, get the entire back catalogue. All the guides, there's ten guides on, uh, iTunes. It's under, what is it under now? They keep moving it around. They didn't like us clogging up the chart in the audiobooks. We were basically taking up the whole charts. They, they made a new section, which is, uh, isn't it like programmes and periodicals or something? Something like that. And now yeah. we're the top 18 in that. So, uh, yeah. Um, also, of course, Ricky, if people like Carl's ramblings, they can see him and us in animated form. The Ricky Gervais Show coming soon on DVD. Just go to Amazon.co.uk or Amazon.com or Play. Oh, just get off your ass and go to a shop. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, England. And thank you so much to Positive Internet. Those guys allow us to do these free podcasts. Someone's got to pay for these, and, and those guys do and do a great job. So enjoy the free ones, but buy the ones for a couple of quid as well, please. Carl wants another house. Wanker. St. Francis of Assisi once said, Where there is charity and wisdom, there is neither fear nor ignorance. Acts of human charity have been documented since the beginning of recorded history. Yet even now, in the most democratic and economically advanced nations, charity is still necessary. Does this mean that charitable acts are failing to affect meaningful change? Should charity even be the responsibility of individual citizens, or is it the obligation of government? Do handouts make people lazy and dependent, instead of resourceful and responsible for their own livelihoods? Is it every man for himself, or are we all in this together? To discuss these questions and more, 
I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. <sighs> Fuck. Gonk. All right. So, Red Nose Day, Comet Relief has come round again. Yeah, um, Red Nose Day is obviously the very specific date in the calendar for the whole generic term comic relief, I think. It's normally it? when the uh, telecast happens, yeah. um, people know that that's the day when they can, uh, dress up, do charitable acts, but of course Comic Relief is a charity that's working all the time for, uh, disenfranchised all over the world. And, um, you can go to the website, uh, all year round, which is comicrelief.com. I think there's also rednoseday.com, which is, uh, if you particularly want to donate for this year's appeal. Are you, have you always been a, a strong champion of Comic Relief, Carl? Not really. <laughs> um, Why was I expecting that answer? No, well, this is, but I mean, we're doing a bit of charity now, we're donating our time, it's not much, it's not costing anything, it's a- But I do loads of stuff without going on about it. That's, mm. I don't, I don't think you should shout about the bitch you do for charity, cause then who are you doing it for? Oh exactly, I mean, well this is my thing, isn't it, that, uh, uh, there's a lot of people that only do it if it's in the public eye. It's to do it really to be a busybody or to show off or to feel good about themselves. And I suppose that's good and bad. I mean, if it gets you involved, if it does some good, my gift to the world has been you, Carl, to be quite honest. I feel that you're the world I'm now. sure there's people in Africa going, we, we prefer blankets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing a, a Wills charity, isn't it? Is it? Sort of. I mean, no, if, you, if you make half, if you make a donation to a charity within the will, I suppose that's quite charitable. But Do just mean, giving money to your relatives isn't, is it? Of course it is. Well, they it shouldn't is, have it. They're it's getting something for nothing, but it's, I, mean, I don't know, it's giving something away that you have no use for. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, but, but forget that, it's someone is getting something yeah. when they've done nothing for it, really. Well, it is, it, I suppose it is charity, but charity is usually infused with some sort of altruism, it's it, it's usually to do with, um, uh, giving a, a piece of something that is kindly because you could do with it. I mean, not, not strictly, I think you can give away something you don't need, but it, it's hardly donating a kidney, is it, or some of your wages. It's like, it's not charity on your part because you're literally not around anymore. So it's no longer you giving it, it's just some money that Yeah, but I could, I could either was. give it them or not give it them. Once I'm dead and I've turned to mush, I shouldn't be worrying about Suzanne's mum getting a table. <laughs> <laughs> is but, that what, is but that you what you're know, leaving her? Well, I've, I've called up my dad first. Why are you doing a will for the because show? Because of this travel thing right, I'm yeah. doing and it can get dangerous, you know. But after. why have you done a will up to now? Because you sort of, uh, I don't know, I felt sort of young and free. <laughs> Whereas now I'm- <laughs> Never, that's not for two words I've associated with Carl. <laughs> no. He's always seemed like a man who's in his late fifties. Yeah, and exactly, I'm certainly yeah. never, the idea that you're free. It's it, more- it, Even if we're just talking about the head alone, it's, <laughs> it's the, it's the head of a late fifty-year-old. Free year of old. hair? Yeah, <laughs> totally free of fucking hair. I'm sort of getting on first name terms with my doctor. <laughs> oh, really? Chatting more. Oh, what is it this time? How's your middle yeah. finger? You not know. too bad, Carl. All, all that sort of thing, so it's just made me think- Have you had that done for the will, by the way, for insurance I think stuff? you need to do it for a will. I think you do. There's nothing the on the paper. Exam. No. No, uh, listen, for insurance purposes, I think you need to have, um, a, a testicular exam for testicular cancer. You're just leaving the high risk for <laughs> testicular cancer, actually, and you're, you're entering the high risk for prostate. And cancer. you can have both at the same time. You could have both the at, the same time. at the same time. If he's a very dexterous doctor. Um, I wouldn't want that. Why? Too much like- It's just too, too much playful. going on, it's like someone juggling you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like being examined by Squidly Diddly. And so you said you called up your dad? Called him up, I said is there anything you want <laughs> in, if, I, if I die? Right, and presumably you know, Suzanne, she's getting the, she's getting the lion's share. She is. But then the fellow who was on the end of the phone talking us through it all was going, oh, you should get married. I was going, oh, shut up. He's saying, well, it makes it things a lot easier when it comes to this. And it's like, well, that isn't a reason to get married, is it? <laughs> well. So she can have all my stuff. I said, I've wrote on the bit of paper that she mm. can have it. I'm not bothered. What, I'll be what dead. did you wrote? What did you wrote? You know, all that, whatever's, whatever we've got, she can have. Yeah. Right. Well, that's fine. That's as good as a, yeah. a marriage then, isn't but it? But it's something about, um, tax. If you're not married, you have to hand over more. Well, she'll get, uh, yeah, I suppose if it's money, she'll pay tax on it. Yeah. I think you get so much and then it's like ridiculous tax rate. Yeah. 
but she's going, that's why we should get married, I'm gonna be paying tax. I'm going, hang on a minute, she's already, like, thinking about money loss, <laughs> instead of me b disappearing. Yeah. She's going, yeah, we should, and I'm saying, look, you'll be getting a load of money. I said, if I die on this programme anyway, mm. I'm insured, you'll yeah. be getting about a million pounds for that. Yeah. I said, so that's, that's something you haven't got now. Yeah. Got nowhere near that now. <laughs> I said, so even if you have to pay tax on that. Yeah. I, I don't think it'd be right to get married just in case I get killed. Well, you are married, aren't you, with this? Well, then you may as well get the paperwork. No, because then everyone wants a party. Yeah, no, it's going, not oh, a party, you could go straight down honestly, the office. Honestly, people start going, oh, you should do this, and oh, it's not a proper wedding unless you do that. Have yeah. your two sets of parents met? No. That'd be good, would it? Well, I suppose it's a reason to, isn't it? At least if you're getting married, there's a reason for them to meet. At the moment, there's no reason for them to meet. No. They'd get on each other's nerves. My dad wouldn't get on with a man. <laughs> Why? Just wouldn't. She doesn't like me, so she won't like me dad. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just an exaggerated version. <laughs> so, I think, uh, <sighs> it doesn't need to happen. But you could just nip down the registry office, get it done, done and dusted, and you just phone up your folks and say, it's already happened, it's I too said late. that, I said, listen, if we had to do it, I said if, if it was like we'd got to do it for some reason, mm. I said I'd do that, you, we can have it done by two, you can be back in work for three. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, there's no other, there's no, you know, we've known each other for years. Yeah. We're not gonna suddenly turn into some sort of Tom Hanks and Ed Ryan film <laughs> just because we've got married. Yeah. It's gonna be the same. Exactly yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah. Except she'd want a joint bank account or something. That's mm. the only other thing mm. that would probably change and I don't like the idea of that. <laughs> Why? Just, I like to know what's going on. There's enough people sticking their hand in my account, charity-wise and all that, without an extra hand going in. <laughs> Who is- happens to be the love of your life. <laughs> I'm not moaning about it, I'm just saying it works the way it is. You hear about people getting married and it doesn't last. Adds extra pressure. <laughs> what pressure is it gonna add? Um, It's not gonna add any pressure. I suppose that yeah. you resent the fact that the only reason you'd be getting married is because she gets your money after your death tax free. What if you gave her a series of challenges so that she sort of I earned the right to have that it money? It just keeps her on her toes. <laughs> because- Whilst we're not married, <laughs> it's easy to go, I'm sick of this. So mm. it keeps it- it keeps it Keeps her on her toes, yeah. It keeps us both sort because of Because you're stuff. such a find, she's gotta yeah. work hard to keep you, hasn't she? When you, what have you- what, you never do anything in order to sort of maintain this relationship, as far as I can tell. I'm not saying no, you're not- you're a bad wife, but in terms of I romantic was, Meg Ryan type stuff, wh right. wh you never do anything. Me and Jane were out with him and Suzanne the other night, right, at, uh, uh, dinner, and honestly, he is so- so grumpy. He was saying about, uh, uh, for Christmas, right? He said, you've had a flaw. <laughs> you've had a flaw. <laughs> now, what did that mean? We had a new floor put in. But how is that her floor? Because she wanted it. But you walk on it too. I paid for it. I don't understand what but you mean. But don't you understand that, like, <laughs> a, 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 you know, a romantic break or a, or <laughs> clothes or perfumes, you know, sort of things that are kind of indulgent for a lady. That's that's a gift, not yeah. a new floor. That is like something that you give to some little African fella on comic relief. In fact, I think I saw it once. He <laughs> yeah. didn't have a floor. <laughs> exactly. They built him a floor. I I remember watching it with you, and they gave him a new pair of shoes and the floor. He went, hold on, floor. Or shoes, not both. <laughs> oh. When- when that tsunami hit, and, uh, it was like a month after Christmas, they showed, um, that Britain had given two billion pounds, right? And he was going, that's enough. He said, before, they were living in mud huts, now there's an Arndale Centre. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you think charity is alright, as long as the people don't get above their station with charity? I think it should be there as a little, little booster. Something's happened that they didn't expect. They're all a bit in shock. I don't think they'll, they'll, they'll feel bad because all they ever seem to do, these countries that are struggling, they never give anything back. Right. They've always got their hand out. Right. And it's been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. I remember being a kid, people mm. knocking on the door, my mum going, don't look at the door, there's someone there. <laughs> <laughs> and we just pretend they were Charity there. starts at home, not at your home. <laughs> no, but because it's all the time. I mean, my mum didn't like answering the door anyway, even if it was the pools man, she'd sort of say, don't move and he might not see that we're here. So you just froze where a man was at the door. Well, you just- because the front room was near the door so people right. could see in. Right. So you just sort of stayed there and pretend that either you well, can't so like some sort of predator, like 
They can't see you if you don't move. Well, even if he was peering in through the window and he could see you in there not moving. So he looked through <laughs> and there was three people just frozen, <laughs> right, right, like statues, right, just their eyes looking at him. Yeah. And well, then confused. Well, not they're you. clearly dead on Move On. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's obviously been a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> and did you, did you say sitting or stand up or no. did you sort of like throw yourself no, to just, the floor? No, we just sat, we just sat on, on the, you know, where you were and you just stayed still. But did he ever look in and see I you I don't know, cause you didn't turn around, did you? <laughs> so you would pretend you couldn't hear the door? It's easy, it's honestly, the amount of times people would come round, it's either, right. it seemed to be the 80s, I had a lot of it, because it was yeah. all the Avon thing, wasn't it? It was perfume, yeah. Yeah. Tupperware. What? Tupperware. Tupperware? Yeah, the plastic <laughs> boxes. <laughs> Tupperware! Tupperware. It's, tu it's dishes for fat people. Uh, here we go. Oh, these are big, good they are. They're for fat fuckers, like you to eat out of. There was the pills, man. Right. Just a lot of charity stuff. It just a lot, it seemed to be the time, the 80s, that they suddenly found out they can sort of scav money off people. Yeah. And oh, there was a lot of scaving. So, that, uh, that's why we used to ignore the door. <laughs> I just love this image of you. Yeah. So you're Simon, in the lounge, yeah. you're having a little boogie, it's Christmas, someone's yeah. tapping on the glass. <laughs> Freeze! Freeze. <laughs> they just go, well, we'll move on. Yeah. Nothing yeah, here for yeah. us. Hammer time. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> There's a, uh, let, let, okay, right, let's do the scenario. I'm, I'm at the door. I can- I can see you in there. You might as well come open the door. Carl? Carl? Why are you staying so still? Are you, are you trying to avoid me? <laughs> it's working. Carl? Your eyes are moving. <laughs> can you come to the door, please? <laughs> I suppose in the end you've got to move Carl, on. Carl? Um, no. I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here until <laughs> you- I have to move. <laughs> Carl! <laughs> <laughs> this is the most pointless <laughs> podcast we've ever done. Me showing your name and you pretending not to be here. <sighs> okay, and I'll move on then. Right. It exactly. works. Yeah. Works okay. perfectly. Because Brilliant. once they've got you, that's the whole thing with charity. Once they've stopped you in the street, if you've stopped, that's it. Keeps on going. You're handing- you're handing something over. Yeah. I mean, the amount of times I've been stopped. I mean, the good thing now is you've got an iPod, so you can just either pretend you're on the phone mm. or listen to music. Or just stay very still. <laughs> just freeze when someone says, "Can I trouble you?" For <laughs> oh, he's totally frozen. That would be amazing because they're normally in one spot, aren't they? Yeah. So it's just so they're carrying on they selling, stop you, and so you've you got to stay there for the rest of it outside waitress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for seven yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah. It goes dark. <laughs> Well, I'm- I've finished my shift, I'm off. And then you just see- you, your eyes just see them walk away like that and they all meet in their little tunics. And then you start walk- they look back and you freeze. And then they walk on. And then you can go home. Seven hours late. If you would like to donate to Colour Relief, why not visit rednoseday.com? Ever since I was young, I've always- like going in charity shops, particularly because, you know, you can- you find sort of interesting old records in there. Never sort of gone in there to buy clothes and stuff, but, you know, books, whatever. And, uh, I was in a charity shop, you know, and I've patron patronised them for years, and I noticed that through the window, there was like a paparazzi guy, and he was taking pictures of me through the window. That was a bit weird. And obviously the old ladies in there didn't have any idea who I was, so they just thought that was a bit strange. And then it was in one of the, uh, the magazines, like the kind of celebrity magazines. It's, oh, here's Steve Merchant. You know, he, despite all the money he must have made from his various projects, he's still going in charity shops. And you just think, but so, I, how is that a bad thing? Like, I'm yeah, sure I'm I giving know. my money to a charity. Isn't that a noble cause? I mean, obviously that's not the reason I'm doing it. I'm doing it to save 50p. To save 50p, of course, but. But they don't know they that. They don't know that. No. They you might be going there and going, keep the chains, love. You never have said never that. Never said that. Never said that in your life. No, occasionally I'll shoplift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no mug. 70p? Don't you think that seems frustrating, though, that- Yeah, but what do you expect? They're, <sighs> what are they gonna do? They're not gonna say Steve Merchant, heart of gold, are they? I just thought all these things would slowly accumulate towards the OBE. Yeah, I know. I know. I think you've got to do a bit more than, um, yeah. get, uh, Roger Whitaker's greatest <laughs> hits for 10p. <laughs> My mum's always in them. And, uh, because my mum goes in them, my dad sort of got into going into them now because, you know, the weather's not good or whatever and he thinks rather than standing outside. He- he went in one and he was after a jacket. 
Just like a sort of a you know casual but quite smart. Yeah, he's quite a big bloke, so it's difficult to find them, right? So he's in there, sees the jacket, goes, "Oh look, here's, here's that sort of jacket that I'm after." Picks it up, tries it on. Oh, it fits. It's good, this, isn't it? She's going, yeah, yeah. While well, she's looking at, you know, a toad that you put money in or whatever. Yeah. Mm. So he gets to the counter, and it's got a price tag on it, eight quid, right? So he said, "I'll give you give you six quid." He had six quid in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Give you six quid for that. She went, "No, it's it's eight pounds." Now that's wrong, isn't it? That's a that's a good price, and it's six quid. They've got it for nothing. Yeah. Mm. And she she wouldn't have any of it. He said, "Surely, surely, something's better than nothing. If you don't give me this for six quid, it's going back on the back on the anger." And they, they said, "No, sorry." Yeah, but they might later sell it for eight pounds. But they might not, and it's been given to them for free. Yeah, so what not... does it matter? But the the old who's come not... up with the price of eight quid? Who is this? Yeah, but they she's don't know not how hagg- much She's not there to haggle. She, someone's priced up, and she's just a volunteer. Who's, who's maybe she thought maybe she thought of it that. She was losing the charity two pounds as opposed to gaining it six. But they haven't, haven't gained anything because he put it back on. And how many people want it? How many people are looking out for that jacket? It might be the principal. She might have thought, "Oh, you can't haggle when it's for charity." It was a fair price. Someone I give a lot of stuff to charity, a lot. Most of the time, just because it's it's nearer than the wheelie bin is. It's <laughs> just a way of getting rid of garbage most <laughs> of the time with me. Stick it all in a bin bag. Good stuff on the top. The stuff that you're embarrassed about. Yeah. Stick it in the bottom of the bag. What are you embarrassed Running, about? Just old shoes, trainers. Some of the books you've written. Uh, socks, socks. Underpants. Underpants! You do not give underpants to charity. Washed. But who's gonna- <laughs> Washed, <laughs> I know, as opposed to just like peeling them off. <laughs> yeah. Well, you so- I don't know why you've got a problem with underpants, but shoes. You see, I've who's never buy shoes. underpants from a charity yeah. shop? Though? I mean, I don't care how low you are on the socioeconomic level. I know. You can get about 14 pairs for a quid in some places. I know. I don't know who's buying underpants. <laughs> I don't know who's buying your underpants. <laughs> I definitely don't know. I mean, if they were signed. Yeah. That, that is something, that is something I like doing though. When I've given to charity, mm. I like going past the shop and seeing if it made it in the window. Mm. Any success? Yeah, re- recently, the one not far from here had me, um, egg cups in the window. <laughs> so it's like, oh look, there's- What, there's you've that. got a new set of egg cups so you've got rid of your old ones? Yeah. I um, don't think we've got any egg cups. Haven't you? No. Why I don't not? think so. I don't. You don't have boiled eggs? Uh, I can't imagine you- it, it would take- t- you'd be too impatient to boil an egg, Rick. Well, I- I'm, yeah, I just don't- it's just those things you think of never buying, you know, like, you know, egg cups, a whisk. No, but you do eventually. I suppose you got to, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's things that were just always there when you grow up, isn't it? That you yeah. have to go and you think, you know, think of, but not second hand though. But there's nothing wrong, honestly, it's hardly be, I mean, it's made the window space. That's how good it was. It had hardly been used, that egg cup. Because mm. it was a doubler. And I think they were quite small for the egg size that I get. I think they were made more for the small egg than I have the large egg. Right. So it was, it was never really Just used. like your underpants. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Are you ever been a charity shopper, Rick? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what I used to do a lot of was, um, was records and, and, uh, tapes and things like that. But it ended up sort of being ironic. It really ended up, like, getting, you know, something like, uh, Shane Rich's Greatest Hits. Yeah. And things like that. A bit of a dilemma that, um, my auntie Nora had. She likes charity shops as well. Mm. Uh, She's got a neighbour. Went out to Graceland's big Elvis fan. They came back. She said, "How was how was Graceland's?" They said, "Oh, it was brilliant. Best holiday we've ever had. Probably go back again." We've got a gift for you, right? They get out this clock, like a like a little sort of. It's like a Swiss. You know the Swiss sort of um, looks cuckoo like a little clock. house, like yeah. a cuckoo clock. Mm. But on the hour, little Elvis comes out the top and goes. <laughs> <laughs> so she went, oh cheers, she's not really into Elvis, she's more into Jim Reeves and yeah, uh, yeah. Glenn Campbell and stuff. Yeah. But what can you say? She said, oh thanks, mm. thanks mm. for that. She put it in, took it in the house. Maybe they could uh, get attachments. Maybe you get a little uh, Jim Reeves to pop on the spring. <laughs> Change it, anything you yeah. like. Like, uh, so solid crew, you can get a little so solid crew. <laughs> and it, 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 that pops out, or whoever. So know. anyway, it's in the house, she's thinking, I'm not gonna put that up. It's not her sort of thing. So, uh, she thinks, give it to charity. Of course. She goes down to the charity shop, gives them that, thinks nothing of it, goes off to the pub for her afternoon drink. Mm. <laughs> anyway, next day she's going out for her afternoon drink again, passes the charity shop, it's in the window. Oof. 
Oh. And the chances are our friends are gonna pass by. That was a dilemma. Of course. You have to buy it back. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. At a hugely inflated price. <laughs> For those that are American listeners, Comic Relief here is a uh, sort of, um, it, it happens every hour of the year and, you know, people often do things, um, in their workplace or at school, they can dress up, they can raise money in different fun ways and we were told in a school assembly, it was Comic Relief next Friday, right. everyone has to come along dressed up in fancy dress to school on that day. Has to. Yeah, they said they have to, have to dress up. They said, um, you pay 50p towards Comic Relief and you have to pay a pound if you don't dress up. Right? That's annoying, isn't it? So, I, of course, I'm looking forward to this, because, you know, I'm a sort of aspiring comedian and that. Get to dress up like a clown, right? Spent wow. quite a lot of time getting the old clown outfit together. What did that look like? The what shoes, obviously, I just wore my regular <laughs> shoes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I had the red nose, a wig. Wow. You know, the whole deal. Bow, big bow tie that my mum made for me, like, you know. I thought this is gonna be the best day ever, right? Get to school, I want you to picture this scene, right, during the assembly in my class of 30. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform. Lanky kid dressed as a clown. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school. There was three people in the entire school who dressed up. But Steve, you're fifty p. Yes, but then worse than that, it turns out I was furious because I looked like an utter dick. Obviously, um, it turns out that what happened. I don't know whether I missed this information, but apparently the headmaster must have had another assembly where he told people that he wasn't allowed to enforce that rule right. about making people pay well, that's good. against their will. Yeah. So obviously no one showed up dressed what, like an utter dick except what, me and what, about two other knobs. What disappoints me is that for a man who was um, a self-confessed uh, uh, aspiring comedian, you chose the least funny thing in the world <laughs> to dress as. Yeah. It, clowns are anti-comedy. They suck comedy out of the room. It's not- You're right. And this is from a man who wanted to dress as Hitler at the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. He knows funny costumes when he thinks. <laughs> but you were saying about the guys who bother you in the street. Did I tell you that when I pretended to be foreign to try and get out of that? Did I tell you that story? Amazing. Because I used to, a technique I used to develop at university was whenever people bothered me in the street, I would pretend to be sort of generic foreign. I can't really do a foreign accent, but I would just be like, like if someone asked for directions, I was always worried about giving them the wrong directions, so I would just, sorry, I don't, I don't really, uh, how you say, you know, it's just yeah. kind of vague foreign. Brilliant. And I've periodically used this method throughout my life, and not so long ago a guy stopped me with one of those charity tunics. And I sprang into me old trick. I was like, sorry, I don't, um, uh, a, um, a, 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 an elderly Russian one. <laughs> I don't know what voice that is, I don't yeah. know what accent it went, it went from vaguely French yeah. to sort of Eastern European beggar. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was. And the guy, I was like, I don't, uh, he was, well, let's just let me explain to you about it. I, sorry, I'm not from, um, and the guy- This world. Yeah. I am from <laughs> Planet <laughs> Snark. <laughs> and the guy said, uh, are you Stephen Merchant? No. Swear sorry. Not when you were famous. Oh yeah. No you didn't. Yeah. Cause I hadn't, it hadn't occurred to me, I just, it was like a lapse no! of concentration. God. It oh was a lapse of concentration because, um. And did your bow tie spin round <laughs> and you squirted in water and ran away? <laughs> That's what I did, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you don't always remember that you've been on the tour. It's not like I That's instantly remembered that. Amazing. So, but look, so he says, are you Stephen Merchant? And I, and then you're at this position where you've got to go, either you've got to admit what you did, or you've got to carry on the lie, <laughs> and I chose the second one. <laughs> so I was kind of like, I don't, I don't know who that is. <laughs> what? I don't know what you. And he was like, Oh God! Really? You look a lot like him. I was going, I've never heard. I don't. <laughs> In fact, you are Stephen Merchant. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always getting stopped for for. I mean, there's so many charities now. Anything. I think that's the other problem, actually. That there's so many now. Years ago, a problem wouldn't have been a problem. Whereas today, mm. it's someone's got this problem, someone's got OCD and we're collecting for that. Right. It's not just starving people anymore, it's everything. Yeah. One little fault, they're out there with a clipboard. Yeah, a lot, of new, bank a lot of new diseases have Definitely. cropped up. Particularly for these sort of rich and famous diseases that, that, that really, uh, Weren't third around. world people do not suffer from. So, I was in, um, W.H. Smith's buying, probably buying a Valentine's card. 
Oh, right. okay. So there you go, you see. So I do yeah. do a bit. And, um... Is this the cheapest one you've got, love? <laughs> and I bought... Yeah. This, I bought a big bar of, like, um, Galaxy. Oh, <laughs> Cheaper than a... Cheaper than a box of chocolates, but yeah, still nice. For me, that, because he had an offer oh. on, right? Oh, <laughs> this is, this is what I'm saying. saying. Okay, yeah. she's getting a card, isn't she? This is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I felt awkward, because she could see that, oh, he must have some money. What, a big bar of Galaxy? Because you could afford a... some chocolate. Well, mm. it's c it was like an impulse buy thing. Yeah. Right. So she's <laughs> thinking, <laughs> he's got money to burn. Yeah. So, <laughs> at first, I didn't yeah. know who she There's was. There's a guy over here buying a big bar of Galaxy and a, and a, and a small card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, follow him. So she's <laughs> there, <laughs> I'm <laughs> thinking <laughs> she just works in WH Smith. Yeah. Morning, sir. All right, how's it going? Right. Oh, have you got a minute? Mm. So I'm thinking, oh, is it WH Smith saying, you know, how often do you buy the Galaxy? Because they always yeah. do sort of surveys yeah. and stuff. So she so. said, oh, you like chocolate? I went, yeah. She said, yeah, I'll have a chocolate. Right? Oh. Little chocolate. Yeah. I ate it. Yeah, then she goes, she. right, uh, are you aware of the problems in the world? So I'm thinking, oh, what's this? You see, they've been clever there. Yes. I can't say no and walk off without a bit of chocolate. Sure. Right. So, Why don't you freeze? Um, Just freeze. <laughs> 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 We're closing up now. We're closing the shop. <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah, there's loads of problems. I'm sick of it. So she says, um... No, not yours, sir. There so, are some people who are starving. Yeah, and I explained to her, I said, listen, I said, I've got loads of these charities. Every right. month. Right. So my bank account is literally- because I, I don't use my current bank account that much. So right. you look at it with a statement, it's like, Tools for Africa. Right. Help the aged. Mm. Deaf kids. Yeah. Um, there's another one. Dot com. Deaf kids dot com. There's, 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 there's loads. Is Tools for Africa when they send people like Carl over to help <laughs> out? <laughs> yeah! That is comic relief. <laughs> Tools for Africa is another name for comic relief if you watch it. So, um, so anyway, I said I do all this. She's going, oh, that's very good of you, but, you know, w w we, we need your money as well. So she's saying, just, just as much as you can afford, you know, every little helps and everything. I've been here all day. Look, as you can see, I haven't had much luck. It's not that busy in the shop, blah, blah. Oh, all right then, right? So I give her the details. She looks at the amount, she goes, right, now the options are, we've got, you can tick the five pound box, the ten pound box, the twenty pound box, the fifty pound box. This is a monthly payment. Right. She said, well, I'll put you down for a tenner. Forget the fiver, she just leapfrogged straight that straight in. away. <laughs> yeah. And you can't go back, can you? Because then you feel bad. Sure. To sort of go, well, you've got a five pound one there, tick, tick, that one. Yeah. She can see I've got the chocolate, sort of wasting my money on things that aren't necessary yeah. when there's people dying around the world. Yeah. yeah. I said, right, yeah, tenner, fine. And, you know, I filled it all out. I left the shop. Yep. Spent more on that than I did on the card and the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you spent under ten pounds then, basically. So <laughs> I get I get get home and everything. Forget about it. I keep seeing these statements going out. It looks like Gandhi's bank account. The, the amount of stuff I'm giving away for charities. Sure. I forget about it though. Forget it. It's I'm doing my bit for charity. I should yeah. feel good about it. Yeah. Anyway, something kicks off in the world. Right. Ring, ring, ring. ring. Oh. Hello. Is that Mr. Bilkinson? Straight away, I'm thinking, oh, who's this? This isn't good. Yeah. Oh, hello, <laughs> it's so-and-so charity. Right. Are you aware of the problems in the world? I said, yes, I am. There's lots of them. Yeah, but have you heard about the latest one? I said, yeah. She went, well, I'm just calling up to say thanks for the donation that you give us every month, but it's not enough. So I said, yeah, well, I think I give enough. I said, you're not the only ones here. I said, yeah. I've got I've got five charities on the go here. Yeah. I said, and, you know, I've give you what I can afford. Yeah. She's going, yeah, but let me just tell you about the problems. There's so many people missing here. This is bad. These are dying. Da da da. I'm going. I know. I know. I've, I was told all this when I signed up, mm. and I agreed to that amount. Yeah. The ten pounds that I said I'm happy to give you. That's what I can afford. Call some other people up who aren't giving you a tenner. Yeah. She goes, no, but we haven't got their numbers, you know, and we understand that you're a supporter of our charity, and you know, just a little bit more will help. I said, listen, I can't. I've give you that amount. If you want, if it's not enough, let's stop the direct debit now. Right. I said, if it's not helping you, <laughs> let's can it yeah. and I'll give it to deafkids.com. <laughs> I said, because they're not calling up mithering. No. Well, they can. That's a good thing with them. So <laughs> she said, no, I, d I don't want to do that. I said, well, that's it then. She, and, and she wouldn't let it go. And um, in the end, she got an extra £1.50 off me. Yes. Right. But that shouldn't be allowed. I think they should have, like, one year where they go this year, uh, you know. Hungry people. Right. Next year, people with a limp. <laughs> or just like they do in, w with the China thing, with the year of the cat, year of the rabbit. It's very clear. Yeah. It's that year. That's who we're helping this year. Right. If you've got that problem, it's your year, you're gonna have a good one. And who decides? Right. 
Uh, just have some meeting. Just have a meeting a with- monk, But who gets together in the meeting? Uh, the, what'll be the, the first charity. year? So what'll be the first year? This year? Right, well, we'd- we'd look at it and we'd go, right, what- what are we hearing a lot of problems about? And someone goes, so-and-so's hungry. Go, right, are we all in? Are we in to give this lot food? And we're not just gonna give so them food- So it's not everyone who's hungry, it's specific people, so it's like- Hungry- Starving. People who are starving. If someone goes, oh, me, uh, uh, I've got, um, uh, I, I don't know, uh, what's another problem? Adenoids. Me, me, kid's deaf. Well, maybe next year. Maybe next year. It's not your turn this time. We can't help everyone at once. Cause right. that's life, innit? You've got to give and take in your own life. These things right. that I want, I can't have, I do without, have something else But there's so important. many causes that- right. But that's could what I'm saying, years Steve. Years okay. your I know, through. but what can you do then? Because we're not sorting it all out anyway. I'm paraplegic. Right. Uh, oh, I need out really bad. I'm paraplegic. But so does everyone else. Well, why are you giving it to the hungry now? Because if that? we don't oh. help the hungry now, right, they they can't wait. You can wait. Right. Oh, oh God, I'm blind. Is this a different person? Though? Yeah, I'm blind. Right. Well, you're not hungry though, are you? Well, a bit peckish. Yeah. Well, where's the fridge? I can't find the fridge. Can you help me to the fridge? Yeah. Otherwise I'd be hungry as well. I'm blind and hungry. I'm blind and hungry because I don't know where the fridge is. Who's like you in? <laughs> <laughs> but Carl, this, this is just, it's just a chaotic idea. It's, it's a chaotic not. because people who are hungry, there's, there's always gonna be people who are hungry. Yeah, but, but then- You're not gonna just, cause there's always gonna be new people. Yeah. yeah. But, but I sort the problem out. They've eaten all the food. It doesn't last forever, the but, food, but Carl. But I sort it out properly. How do you sort it out? Because I'll go, right, not only are we just giving you food, right. we're giving you some seeds. We're giving you a pan. What, you think you... they haven't Let thought of that? Let me hear the theory, please. Right. Sort it out. Don't just give food. That's gonna run out. Right. Give them a proper- you see, the problem is, these companies who jump on the back of all- do you know when I was in the okay. jungle? Right, when I was yeah. in the jungle, yeah. right? On that travel thing. Yep. I was in that tribe, right? Now, some company had given that tribe a laptop. Mm. Because it makes them look good. They can send out a press release. Mm. Well done to so and so computers. Right. They supplied the tribe in, you know, out at Amazon with a computer. I saw it, they were using it as a breadboard. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't know what it is. They've got no electric, it's useless to them. Right. And that's what charity does. Right. Companies use it to make them look good. When I was there and I really needed to go to the toilet, I was thinking, ah, oh, tribe, I wonder what their toilet facilities are like, right? Mm. Thinking they might, it might be better than just doing it in a hole. Surely they've built a toilet. They're not stupid people. They kill animals. They know what they're doing. They know mm. how to cook. Surely they've built some sort of unit. Turns out, they don't. They still do it in a hole. <laughs> but some company <laughs> had been there, some plumbing firm, and given them a toilet, mm. right? The bloke who, you know, the producer who was out there, he said, oh, you'll be happy. There's a toilet round the back there. I'm thinking, oh, brilliant. I go round there, it is a toilet, but it's not plumbed in. Sure. So it's just a vase with shit in it. <laughs> It doesn't work, and this is what we need to do. We need to get out there and say, this is how it works. Educate right. them. Okay, so let's do this then. So it's just with the seeds. You're not giving them a- um, so I'm a starving African. Hello, Carl. C have you got any food? Got any- got any food? Got any sandwiches? I'm well, they starving. have, but right. if I give you my sandwich, right. yeah. there's someone else behind you, right, and they'll okay. all come out. So what are you gonna do then? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna help you. How? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna- I'm gonna make you think about how to make food. Oh, okay, right. Uh, have you ever then? grown anything before? No, no. Right, well no. here's some seeds for oh, potatoes. Brilliant. Oh thanks Carl, see you later. Do I just put them in the ground, yeah? Put them in the ground and water oh. them. Oh, there's no water, you dopey cunt. There is some No, water. there's no water, you dopey cunt. That's why we're starving, you dopey cunt. Right, well, at that point, that's where I go, well this is a lost cause, eh? Right. there's no point. Can I have your so sandwich then, after all, No, or you're what? not having it. We're right. not having it so now. not only can I have a sandwich, you give me seeds with no water, you useless, bald-headed fucking twonk. Right, but all I've done there is made the mistake of the computer firm who's given a laptop to a tribe. Right. It's useless. Right. But there's gotta be another way around this. Go on then. Either move. Right. Because every year <laughs> they're gonna be queuing up saying, I'm hungry, give me a sandwich. <laughs> no, you're not having another sandwich. Once again, it's an <laughs> utterly ill-informed discussion. <laughs> I'm just saying there's no <gasps> point. Queuing up oh. every year. Oh. Do you want a sandwich? Here's oh. a sandwich. But Carl, the next year, can oh. I have a sandwich? Where's your brother? He died. <laughs> <laughs> it's not oh, sorting anything. It's buying him an extra day, an extra month, or something. But it's Carl, pointless. the point is, like Ricky's just flagged up, is that some of these countries, <laughs> the 
<laughs> the he conditions. Died. He died. The conditions are not there to just be able to plant <laughs> potato seeds. <laughs> So what are they meant to do then? Do you think we should go out every- every month, every year with sandwiches? Is that your answer? Like some sort of buffet? An all-you-can-eat thing once a year? <laughs> oh, oh! God! Oh. You see, it is bad. I, you know, I don't oh. want to come across harsh. We- th they've got nothing. We oh. waste stuff here. Waste annoys me just as much. Right. When I see sandwich shops chucking stuff out yeah. and bin bags binning it, yeah. when there's people out there who are hungry, it's mm. ridiculous. Yeah. But I don't- I don't understand- Right. It's a problem that isn't being so solved. So your- so your conclusion for these people, cos there's no water where they are, right, is move. That- that is your honest- they should well, move. Well- well, what's your solution? Well, I- I- I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs. I don't- I don't even uh, pretend to know. Um, but- But, I tell you, it's not just- just- it's sticking a- what's that saying? I don't know, it's sort of sticking a plaster over a hole or something, and the yeah. plaster comes off, it's a problem again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just, that's it's, the same, yeah. It's the same- I think that was Mark Twain. Um, no- <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more like candy. <laughs> if you would like to donate to Comic Relief, why not visit rednoseday.com? Oh, I've got to tell you something, Steve, that cropped up when we were at dinner the other night. Carl said th uh, the most exciting words. He said, I've had another film idea. Wow. Does it star Clive Warren? No, it doesn't. He's gone bigger than that. Well, Carl, turn the film idea. Yeah, but you you slagged it off on that. No, night. I was just trying to. We're all chipping in, saying, "Well, that you know, they're, they're all trying to help." No, all... Suzanne. You see, you had a go, and then Suzanne thought, "Oh, I'm going to have a go here as well." <laughs> if I'd have told her that, at home, she'd just go, "Yeah, that'd be that." But suddenly, <laughs> Jane was chipping in. Everybody was having a go. Yeah, I didn't see anyone else coming up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't realise it was a script editing meeting. <laughs> yeah, they just they thought just, it was a dinner. They just saying, oh, that, you know, they were- No, I'll tell you why it cropped up. I saw right. it. It was another thing in the- that free paper. Yep. It was something about, you know, the way we're advancing fast. Right. Mm. Which reminded me of the, you know, my film, The Love of Two Brains and stuff. Mm. How's that go- is that being made yet? Has have you had any- And it, it was just saying, you know, about, um, our bodies can get reused. In a way, recycling sure. is the ultimate What recycling. did it say about that though? Because uh, you didn't- you didn't go into that. What-, what it was- it? it was hinting at mm. bodies being reused. When you say hinting, you well, saw a bit of a headline didn't read on? No. What- And made the most up in your head? No, it was- it oh. was scientists saying in the future, it's that right. old thing, in the future this is what we'll be able to do. Do you mean like Frankenstein being reused? Mm. Old body parts fusing yeah, together. Yeah, but that was all different. It was like a short arm and a long leg, and that. This is a full body. Right. So pitch the film idea to me. Yeah. Sell it to me like you. I'm a Hollywood executive. Sell me the film. Right. Well, I'd probably tell you about the science facts there that okay. I've read. That. Okay. Let's start. Let's start from scratch then. Um. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Carl, for coming. In. We uh, we heard there was a rumour that you're you're dealing with another a British film company about a thing with a man with two brains with. Um, a guy called Clive Warren we haven't heard of, uh, but Rebecca De Mormo, we're very excited about because she she wouldn't be a a a, a, a lot to, uh, to 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 get so that, so the um, we, this film wouldn't cost much. Um, right. So like I say, I've read they're going to be sort of the ultimate in recycling. Mm. If anything happens to the brain, they can reuse the body. Okay. You've got to remember that. Fantastic. By the time this film is made, that's probably going to be bigger news. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, so it'd be great if it can coincide. Okay. No, no, we love with the that. fact we love this sort of research. We love this level of research. It's exciting. So what I was thinking is, um, I'm picturing probably it doesn't matter. It's not as fixed. It doesn't have to be this person. But I'm thinking Tom Cruise. <sighs> okay, Cruisey. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and the way it works is. Do you know Tom, by the way, or have you got an in there, or? No. no. Okay, okay. but you just- no, I, you, I you think it's the sort of film that, would that he'd, to Tom. he'd sort of be into. I think it would okay. excite him. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Um, I so- Have you, you ordered coffees? Did, did, um- What? Did Cheryl get you a coffee? Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks, great. So- Are you hungry at all? Do you wanna- No. No? Great. So, uh- Cheryl, I might have a tea, actually. Cheryl, if you could- Will we wait for the teas before she comes in? She'll, she'll, she'll just once sneak in. She'll be. She will be very quiet. She'll be like a doormat. She won't even know she's coming. Okay. You just. Okay. You've got your coffee. Okay. I'll have your tea. Thanks you don't want anything. No, no, I'm fine. Okay. Thanks. Go. Uh, actually, uh, I will have a tea. Actually, shall? Two tea, shall? Thanks. Okay, go. Right. 
Thanks, Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Is so there sugar? Sorry, is there sugar in this show? Oh, yeah. Shut the door behind you. Thank you. Okay. Go. All the way. Go. Tom Cruise. So I got Tom Cruise. That's what I've pictured so far. He, he's just on Mission Impossible 7. Right. Uh, in this film. Oh, in the film. So he's, he's playing himself? No, what you're seeing on the screen is mm -hmm. Mission Impossible 7. Like I say, if we don't get Cruise, it can be born Identity and okay. it can be what's it. Yeah. Oh, so if we get Cruise, he is he is playing himself. Yeah. And he's just made and, he's the... and in this film, he's just made Mission Impossible 7. It's the future, is it? This... No, what you're seeing... Right. ...is Mission Impossible 7 on the screen. So I've gone into the cinema and I think I'm going in to see Mission Impossible 7 or I'm going in knowing it's this film. Yeah. I got, know, so I'm going you know. in to see- is it, yeah. what, is it, okay, what's this film called? I haven't got a title yet. We'll just call it Carl Pilkington Project 2. Right. Okay. Can so you, you go in, the opening thing is Mission Impossible 7, you think I've well, seen it? Yeah, I, seen... I thought it was just KP2. Yeah, I'm confused. Yeah. Excuse me, um, uh, excuse me, uh, well, um, I, I was- I came here to see Shh. KP2. Shh. No, no, this is not the film I came to see. I'm talking Shh. to the usher. I'm talking to the usher. No, this is the film. It just- what, what you're seeing is Mission Impossible 7. Like, I don't understand. Right, listen. But, so what happens is then it- it sort of pans out. You yeah. see it's a telly. Ah. ah! There's a bloke watching Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible 7. 7. Right. His girlfriend's watching it going, oh, I love Tom Cruise. Yeah. He's there going, I can't be doing with him. He's so it is set in the future though, this, because we're assuming that he's made seven, so this is a... Yeah. How far in the future is it? Well, uh, when will Mission Impossible uh, 7 be made? I don't know. Probably about two years, the way it's going. Right, so, yeah, 2013. Okay. Right. And this is already, this is underway then, is it? This, this, a practice of recycling the body? Yeah, yeah, by then it's well known that it's out there right. as, a, as a scientific. Let's not get bogged down in all, all these things okay. we can iron out mm. as I see in the script. So you see Mission Impossible Cheryl, 7 on the screen. Cheryl, are any of those biscuits still knocking around? Do you want to do this meeting? <laughs> yes, I do. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry he's a bit Sorry. He's easily distracted. Sorry. But I will have a biscuit as well, Cheryl. <laughs> um, so, okay, I've been watching the film. I've, it's Mission Impossible 7. It's pulled out. There's a guy in his room in his lounge. His girlfriend's with his girlfriend. watching it. She's yes. loving it. She's a fan she of loves Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Right. right. He's a little bit niggled. He wanted to watch something else. Sure. She decided on the DVD, mm -hmm. he sat there annoyed. I can't right. be dealing with Tom Cruise, I can't believe they've made seven of these films. Right. He's a rubbish actor, I right. should be the actor. You know, ah. I've been doing acting for years. But he's not an actor, he's- Well he is. Okay. But he hasn't quite made it, he's, he's in pantos, he's sending a lot of demos off, but he's just it's not funny being seen. I remember this is one of our notes to make it more plausible, this film, because you didn't have him as an actor before, did you? Yeah, well this is how it works, isn't it? Right, interesting. Yeah, well th you, you two don't know about that meeting, do you? Right, okay. So, right, so he's that. a- he's a struggling actor. Hmm. So, what happens is, next day they get up, right? Yeah. She's still going on about Tom Cruise. Loves him. Thinks I'm sick of him. Right, she loves him. Drop my biscuits, garnish my tea, I left it in there too long because oh, he put me off. Just hang on, let me just think. Can I get the spoon, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it's, it's all gone. It's soggy. Mm, oh, that's soggy. Sure, can we get some more of those biscuits in here, please? Do you want- do you want to hear more, or? Yeah, I'd love to yeah, hear no, more, please. Yeah, more. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. conscious can that we... Colin Firth's coming in, he's won an Oscar, so. And, uh, he's got a, a, an idea. Yeah. About, um, a, a, a prince with a right. cleft palate. Anyway, listen. So, um, what happens is, he gets so annoyed with his girlfriend liking Tom Cruise. Mm. He, um, he plans to kill him. So he plans to kill Tom wow, Cruise. This is new. I've now this, this man is a driving actor. He's obviously based in the UK because he's in Panto. So he flies to Hollywood. Now the equivalent of of that. Oh, he's based in the. He's based in yeah, America. Yeah, he's a bit part player. Yep. So uh, he sees Tom Cruise. He kills him somehow. Now it's some way. Right? How does he kill him? Because this is all new to me. I yeah. don't want to put everything because down again, on paper. This in, is just in, a rough idea. In the original idea. pitch in the restaurant, Tom Cruise just dies on the set of Mission Impossible <laughs> Seven. See, right? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right, that's right. Okay. Oh, hang on. So okay, right. he dies in the film in Mission Impossible Seven. They're doing right. that thing on the strings. Right. He cuts. He lands. Right. His body is in perfect condition. So, but how is she watching the film? The film, yeah. Did they put it out even after Tom Cruise no, died? No, no, sorry. He was filming Mission Impossible 8. So he's, okay, so- He's filming the next they, one. They're filming the next one. Mission Impossible 8, okay, sure. He's, he's annoyed. He's going, I can't believe they're making more of these films. Right. I can't get a gig. And yet yeah. they're churning this crap out. Yeah. 
Okay. So he's on his springs. On his wires, yeah. On his wires. Yeah. An accident happens. Springs happens. sounds better. <laughs> he's bouncing around. <laughs> like a baby growth. <laughs> yeah. 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 The right. strings cut, smash, <laughs> Tom Cruise, dead. Right. Right? Right. The bloke hears this on the radio, on the news. Yeah. The, right. the girlfriend's fella. Mm. Hears it on the news, he can't believe it. He's like, yeah. Ooh. Takes his eye off the road a little bit in the celebration. Right. <laughs> Truck plows into the car. Right. So he's killed as well? Well, is he? Okay. Oh, okay. Little interlude. Mm. Fades up, um, comes out of- you're seeing it out of his eyes, you see his eyes sort of opening, you know when you're seeing yeah, it out of yeah. the eyes, yeah, you yeah, see yeah, the yeah, eyelids. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you see his girlfriend there sort of looking at him like a bit- bit startled. Oh, sure. Yeah. And he's going, oh, what happened? And she's going, it's alright, it's alright. And he's going, oh, get me a mirror. She's going, I don't want to get you a mirror yet. Oh, okay. Oh, hold on, what's going on? You've- you've had a bad accident. Oh. Probably uh, terribly disfigured, is he? This is what he's thinking, oh, yeah. how bad do I look? Scarred, you know, burned, You know, yeah. you fancied that Tom Cruise, I'm- oh, I've gone the other way. She's going, it's alright, all right, it's alright. Right. Uh, it can't be relevant, though, that Tom Cruise was killed at the same time. I don't- I don't need to think about Tom Cruise, I'll put him yeah, out of my okay, mind. Go on. Put him out of my mind. Anyway. What's he gonna look All like? mirrors out of the room and everything, he's just learning oh, to- yeah. learn to walk. He's going, why can't I look in a mirror? And the doctor's going, yeah. no point. Yeah. Right, no okay. point, you've got to get used to this body. He's saying, what do you mean? It's great that Tom Cruise did just did a small cameo at the beginning of this film. This is good as well, cause we're seeing it through the- what's the voice like, by the way? The bloke's voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. Just the same as it was oh, earlier. It? Um, so he's- and so the whole thing is through his eyes, I haven't seen his face. No. Then, he gets walking. It's yep. almost time to go home. Yep. His girlfriend comes in. Yep. It's her job to tell him the, the, the new news. Oh the my shocking God, what news. is the news? Um, she says, there's a mirror, look in there. He looks mm. in it, mm. he's Tom Cruise. Right. right. Because he had his accident on the set, he yeah. had the accident, they ended up in the hospital. Right. Quick, quick, we've got to act quick, this is the time, this is the future. Right. Where they use- Where they can use body bodies. Again. All the rest of it. So Tom Cruise is dead. Tom Cruise dead. This but bloke he's, he's Brian. His body, his, 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 his body's squashed. But what's his name, Brian? Yeah. But Brian's brains in Tom Cruise's body. Just a donor body. He just happens to. Just look, happens to. That's how yeah, it is. It's just, just, just meat. It's just, just like top. like a lung donor, exactly. heart donor. Yeah. It's so, just so is his Brian. Uh, he just looks like Tom Cruise now. He's got Tom Cruise's flesh. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Now right. at first, initially, he's annoyed. But he's his like voice, going, the Tom voice Cruise. is still the same as his was, even though it's got Tom Cruise's he's mouth. It's got a bit of both. A little bit different. Little doing, bit. But uh, okay, sorry. Just practically, who is doing the voiceover then for the? It's Tom now. So he's Tom's acting. sort of doing an impression of the, this actor. But Brian's inside Tom. His yeah. name is Brian, but when you look at it on the telly, when the camera woozes round, yeah. And you see him sat in his bed, it's Tom Cruise. Sure. Right, okay. His girlfriend's over the moon, cause she loves Tom Cruise. Right. right. He's gutted cause he couldn't stand him, he can't stand the films. He's thinking- Yeah, oh. but he must be thinking, I look like Tom Cruise, one of the most loved actors of his generation. Yeah. Yeah. No, you he think so, but he's not, because he's in shock, remember, right. he was expecting to see himself and when he looks in the mirror yeah, he's no, someone else. Yeah, that must be else. shocking, yeah. So- also the voice He's going, I can't stand this, and she's going, calm down, calm down, you'll get used to it, I don't wanna get used to it. And uh, she's sort of saying, look, you're alive. Right. Stop moaning. Yeah. Brian. Stop moaning, Brian. Um, she's calling him Brian, I assume. She says- And yeah. Tom Cruise just had a sort of donor card that allowed his body to be given away, did it? Yeah, it's the future. Right. This is- this is- this is 2013, Steve. <laughs> Things have changed. <laughs> Clearly. Right. But What's his girlfriend's name? Claire. Claire- Claire and Brian, okay. Great, just a different body, just a slightly different look. Oh, just right, like so, yeah. he's seen that he looks like Tom Cruise, he's shocked, but he's getting used to it? He doesn't look like him, he is him. Okay, No, right. he's not him, he's Brian, isn't he? Yeah, but to most people it's- Yeah, yeah, When he, he leaves- when he leaves the hospital- They're going, alright Tom, I thought you were dead. They're all going, it's Tom, it's Tom, and he's going, really? oh yeah, and he's going, oh, I knew this would happen, it's doing me head in. Are they a paparazzi? Do they- the paparazzi no, think it's Tom? No, 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 no. Let no him paps. explain, sorry Rick, okay, cause so you heard this, so I wanna hear though. this story. This is weird though, cause it- it- it's so he looks like Tom Cruise. So he wheels out, he's in a wheelchair. Okay. He's going, I'm sick of this. Uh, the other patients are going, Tom, I thought you were dead, and he's yeah, going, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's annoyed, he gets in the car. He gets out there, right. and he sees a poster up on the side of the road right. for Mission Impossible 8. It's- I don't know. It's finished. I thought he died while they were filming it. It's not it. finished. But now, these days, he's shouting about films before they're made. <laughs> okay, it's right. like Lord really? of the Rings, isn't it? Yeah, they're going, Lord of the Rings is in the making. 
and wow. they're going brilliant and all the hype but and everything. But they put the poster up even that after. Seems premature. No, the poster yeah. was already up. That they seems premature given that yeah. a well, man died in... during the production. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I'd have, no. put, I'd have taken the posters down. No, but then all... I don't work in Hollywood. <laughs> right. So the poster's up there and he sees it as he's yeah. in the car driving past. Yeah. And he thinks, that can't, that can't be finished. That makes sense, yeah. They both look at each other. This is your chance. You want it to be an actor. This is the chance. Yeah. Right. Go back to the studio. So he goes in, hello, you don't know me, and they go, oh, we think we do. And they go, no, you don't. I'm Brian. Tom right. died on your film set. Well, they Presume. must know that. They must know <laughs> that, Tom that Tom Cruise died. is dead. Because his family must have been All right, if, if you want to, it makes no difference. We can tweak the script. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have, because before he was a plumber, by the way. <laughs> it was a plumber who was turning up going, I'm going to finish Mission Impossible 8. <laughs> so that was the I much prefer that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And I could sort out your lavatory. You get, you get the idea. Right, no, no, we don't get the idea. So this is, Brian has turned up looking like Tom Cruise. He said the film company, right, who must know that Tom Cruise died on their film set. What were they gonna do? When they they would have had to wrap it up. They would have well, had no, to what? say- You said they put the, the posters are up. <laughs> yes, the posters are up before they've even finished So they're cancelling the film until he walks Basically, in. Basically, yeah. Oh, so they are cancelling the film. They're cancelling it. Okay, so, um, we're afraid that, um, uh, production has stopped on Mr. Bustle, uh, 8 due to the death of Tom Cruise. Hang it's on a stopped. minute. What? I'm Brian. Uh, the, who's Brian? Oh my god, you look exactly like Tom Cruise. Oh, have they done that thing where they put Brian's brain in Tom Cruise's body? Yeah. Ah, oh, but it's not Tom Cruise, you can't act like him. I'm, I'm, you I'm an actor. Yeah, but oh, he was good because he was like one yeah, of the best actors. he's not that good. I never rated him. Yeah, but a lot of people did and he's yeah, got Yeah, a lot a of people didn't. So right. let me bring in a new audience for you, eh? I but can bring a bit to this. Right. So the okay. so the film people, so just tell me what happens, do they sign up the, 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 the new guy? They but sign is up, it in right? the news? It must be in the news that but Tom But are they Cruise pretending died. that it's really Tom no, and they that Tom survived? That. They can't do that. No. But they're quite unscrupulous, So these they've Hollywood told people. the world that Brian is taking over. <laughs> Brian, right, he used to be a plumber, this but it's now- This is Brian, he has no surname. Brian has no He's like Madonna or Cher. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Brian, right, is that Brian with It's above the title, Brian in. I bet it's Brian with a Y. Brian with a Y in Mission Impossible 8. This won't work. Where's Tom Cruise? It's not the same. So this, of course, gives it a boost. Because right. um, well, the flagging franchise has been rejuvenated. The, the yeah. press, the news that's yeah. out there. Yeah. Tom Cruise and his new film. Well, it's not Tom Cruise. They can't say that. Well, it is though. When you look at him, you go, "Oh, it's Tom Cruise." Well, no, you got to say a bloke that looks like Tom Cruise. The body of Tom new... Cruise. Yeah. The, the acting of <laughs> <to> Kill Brian. <laughs> <laughs> In a new movie, Mission Impossible Eight, starring. <laughs> The bones and the skin and stuff of Tom Cruise with Brian's brain. <laughs> oh, forget do it. you like the, do you like <laughs> Do you like Tom Cruise's face but not his acting? Then you'll enjoy Mission Impossible Eight. I can't be <laughs> oh, Mission Impossible Eight <clears throat> from the people who brought you the first seven <laughs> and the hair of the bloke who was in the first seven, but with Brian. No, wait, sorry, I really want to hear the ending of this story movie. Please let right. me ask questions. You've had, you had your chance to ask him questions. Right. So where are we? In a sort of 90 minute running time of a movie, where are we now in the film? Are we about two thirds oh, of the way through? We're close, we're close to the end. Okay. So Mission end. Impossible 8 has been made. So what's the end of our movie? Not of Mission Impossible 8, but the movie you're making. What's hmm. the ending there? Um, Do we ever get to see him in Mission Impossible 8? Yeah, but I think what happens is, mm. um, he becomes the person who he never liked. Right. And it's, it's, I just want to get across the moral that, who are we? Are we the, the people in our body, or the people we look like? Mm. What's important in life? Mm. Is it the way you look, or the way you think? And he be he changes because he looks like Tom Cruise. He becomes the man he never liked. But you see, to me, just from the mm. outsider's point of view, it, even if I was to accept all the other premise of this movie, which is clearly <laughs> horseshit, mm. what would have been more interesting <laughs> is that they don't tell the world that it's a new guy. That they tell the world it's Tom and they've brought him back to life. I love that. That seems more interesting it, because it then dropped, dropped there's the tension. They're lying to the world, and this guy he want he's getting the glory that mm. he always wanted as an actor, but he's lying, and that's mm. a more interesting tension. Is he going to yeah. declare actually I'm not really Tom? I'm Brian. I've been lying to you all. 
and it, that seems like a more interesting dilemma. Instead, you've got we've brought back the walking corpse of Tom Cruise with another man's mind. I mean, but I think if the whole world's accepting of that. <laughs> yeah. No, but you yeah. do want to see that. I think you. I think a lot of people would just want to see it for that morbid factor of my God. Yeah, but you're saying, but this is. You mean they want to see your film because of this morbid factor? Yeah, this is a fiction. This is a fiction. This didn't really happen. You mean the final act of the film is us seeing Mission Impossible 8, <laughs> starring the real Tom Cruise playing just his own cadaver, <laughs> and, I mean, it's an Oscar-winning performance from Tom. I don't know how he's keeping in check who, who yeah. he is. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, what's his girlfriend think of this? Who's? Brian's. She's loving it, isn't she? Because it's, it's, she always liked Tom Cruise. She's over What did Brian look like, just out of interest? He's just sort of, um, sort of an older looking- Well, who would play him? Who would play him in this film? Probably... This has got to be American, I'm not- Pro um, what's his name? The bloke who was in Cheers, probably. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. So Ted Danson <laughs> is Brian. So Claire, <laughs> right. <laughs> this is so confusing <laughs> because Ted Danson's supposed to be someone that we've never heard of, even though he's Ted Danson, and Tom Cruise is playing himself, the famous actor Tom Cruise, who is now inhabited Ted by Ted Danson, who's Ted not Danson. Ted Danson. <laughs> Ted Danson! <laughs> Ted Danson as Brian. <laughs> Ted Danson as Brian as Tom Cruise as and Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible 8. <laughs> wow. So, have you got a title yet? No. No, I just wanted to know if you're in. Surely the wife of Brian. <laughs> the wife of Brian. Who's played Claire? Uh, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm up for you, you know, that's why I've come to you, I thought you'd know. There's an obvious suggestion, okay, so Rebecca okay. De Mornay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is so hot after the love of a brain or whatever it was called. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you wanna go where everybody knows your name is Brian. <laughs> well, that's about it for this, um, special free guide to, in aid of Red Nose Day, comic relief. If you have enjoyed this, or even if you haven't, please make a contribution, big or small, to Comic Relief. You can visit rednoseday.com to do that. We'd appreciate it. Little Richard Curtis would appreciate it. Mm. He's definitely gonna get an OBE at some definitely point, if not now. a knighthood. Yeah. Give him both. Carl, look at it this way. Supposing people come to this, they haven't- they don't- they didn't like The Office, Extras, me, Steve, Idiot Abroad, The Ricky Gervais Show, didn't like any of that, but they thought, hold on, they're doing something for charity, I'll check this out. They've had a wail of a time, they've laughed at everything, they're gonna go and buy all the guides still available on iTunes now. That- that is shameless. <laughs> also, I'm doing a live stand-up comedy tour at the end of the year. You can check out the details on rickygermaze.com. <laughs> ah, just do something for charity. Or not. It's up to you. So, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, and thank you. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And from the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington, it's a goodbye. Alright. And a big thank you to Positive Internet. Those guys make these little free podcasts possible. Good guys.